If you enjoy board games, but can be overwhelmed by the over 642 games and accessories that were either restocked this month or are just days away from being released, join me to journey through some top picks and suggestions, best bets, and a few wild cards in this month's Board Game Buyer's Guide. I'm Chaz Marler from Watch It Played, and with this summer convention season right around the corner, the number of games being released and announced right now is starting to amp up. There are a lot of titles becoming available. So let's start off this episode by discussing several of these new arrivals and restocks that recently grabbed my attention out of the pack, such as Unmatched Jurassic Park Dr. Sattler vs. T-Rex. This is the latest installment for Unmatched, a series of miniature fighting games featuring characters, each of which has unique powers, and features a massive T-Rex who unleashes seemingly unstoppable fearsome attacks, while Dr. Sattler makes full use of her surroundings and receives assistance from Dr. Ian Malcolm and his expertise on chaos theory. Besides being a new set in the Unmatched line, a very popular and critically acclaimed game series, the Jurassic Park installment also includes this miniature for the Dr. Ian Malcolm character. This! This is the sculpt for his miniature that they decided to go with. Which... is a choice. Ah, Jeff Goldblum, we do not deserve you. But if dinosaurs aren't your animal of choice, well, then how about rats? Uh, specifically, First Rat, in which resilient rodents race to be the first to assemble a rocket to the moon, which, as all rats know, is made of delicious cheese. By collectively scavenging the local junkyard for the parts that they'll need, or hiring other animals for assistance, for a price, of course, the players will construct their junk-powered space jalopy and, in the end, the rat family that contributes the most rocket parts and trains the most ratronauts, their word, not mine, he said enviously, that player will be the one to feast on the most lunar cheese. Or dirt. I mean, whatever they find up there on the moon. Cheese. Sure. And going from high above the skies to deep under the water, we have Squid Inc., a King of the Hill style game of climbing the ranks in an underwater organization in order to float to the top of this subaquatic corporate ladder. Along the way, players recruit distinguished business sea creatures from anglerfish to hammerhead sharks, each with a different value and unique ability. Every acquired aquatic ally starts at the bottom of the organization, earning promotions to climb up to the next level where, if there's no room, somebody gets knocked back down. So to come out on top, each feisty fish will have to use their strengths while also preying on their opponent's weaknesses. However, if manipulating mischievous marine middle managers is a little too salty for your taste, over here on dry land we have a conflict of a different sort with Quartermaster General 1914, which is the latest title in the Quartermaster General series of war games. Now, what makes the Quartermaster General series different is that, instead of cranking out troops and engaging in direct conflict, it focuses instead on maintaining supply lines to your units, preventing forces from being spread too thin. Each player has a deck that represents their resources, and moving through that deck too quickly could result in troops in certain locations being neglected. So there's always sort of a balancing act going on. At this point, there's now several different games in the Quartermaster General series. I have the original, and I find that this one still provides a territory control experience that's slightly different than any other game that I've played. Or instead of the historical past of World War I, how about a fictitious future in Batman The Dark Knight Returns board game, which takes place in the world introduced in Frank Miller's groundbreaking graphic novel from 1986 of the same name. Except the, except the comic doesn't have board game in its name, which which is something that doesn't, doesn't really require explaining. The game follows the storyline of the comic, with Batman doing everything he can to survive the relentless onslaught of ruthless mutants, the police, the press, his most infamous villains, and even the Man of Steel himself. To help convey the game's sense of survival, instead of leveling up characters, Batman must persevere through a series of missions in which the results of one game session carry over to the next, creating a fight against attrition. 
Batman The Dark Knight Returns board game is based on a watershed moment in comics history. And if you like your board games based on a little bit of history, ancient history perhaps, then this episode's first sponsor has you covered with prehistoric provision procurement in Tusk from Gale Force 9. The magnificent mammoth offers your Neanderthal tribe an abundance of food beyond your wildest dreams, but these are big, powerful beasts with dangerous dental protuberances that they named the game after. Therefore, to ensure a successful hunt, every tribesperson will need to work together. Even so, though, there can still only be one master of the hunt, so to ensure that that's you and your tribe, you'll need to make use of the land's many resources to become the most powerful tribe, winning the game, and your place in legends that will be retold for generations. Tusk is a family-friendly, semi-cooperative game of working together, while also manipulating alliances and hoarding supplies, in order to successfully survive the big hunt. Tusk is currently scheduled to arrive online and in stores in June, so follow the link in this video's description to find it, or pre-order it directly from Gale Force 9. Every episode covers a variety of different games, but one thing is always the same. Several of those games inevitably make the leap from my wish list to the game shelf, and this month is no exception, with several games landing on my shelves, and hopefully the gaming table soon. The first of them being The Thing, the board game from Pendragon Game Studio, where players start off as regular humans working in Outpost 31, except for one player who secretly starts off as The Thing. The Thing's goals are to infect others, to prevent the survivors from escaping, or to successfully escape with them. And as a human, well, all you gotta do is just keep the power on long enough to survive. Now this is not the first game based on the classic horror film from 1982, because in 2017 Mondo Games and The Op partnered to bring us The Thing Infection at Outpost 31, which follows a similar theme, but comparatively, may have a slightly lighter rule set. The 2017 take on the premise played 4 to 8 players, while this new version supports 1 to 8, meaning that there's a solo mode in this box, which is going to be really interesting to see. But, not to be out-monstered, is the next game on the shelf this month, Cryptid Urban Legends, which we have right here. A two-player game in which a determined scientist manipulates heat, movement, and sonic sensors to scan the city in order to locate and capture the cryptic creature, the other player, who snakes their way through the shadows and back alleys of the city to avoid capture. The original Cryptid is a very unique logic puzzle of an experience. While Cryptid Urban Legends does share the Cryptid name, has nothing else in common with its predecessor. This is an abstract competitive card game of trying to outsmart your opponent before they outsmart you. But if you prefer your monsters instead, long gone and fossilized in the ground, then you may dig a game that's been on my wish list for quite some time, and will soon be on my shelf again. Fossilis, a game of paleontological exploits featuring a 3D dig site board with rescued res recessed pockets filled with dinosaur bones We're and theranoids. This is the best take we've done so far. And thick terrain tiles that cover each dig site. Now, as players remove the top layers of sand, clay, and stone, they'll discover trace fossils, which can be exchanged for tools, the plaster necessary to extract specimens, and as they dig deeper, preserved bones will eventually be discovered. While you're digging for fossils, why not also dig up some golden treasure in The Quest for El Dorado? This is a fantastic game of racing for riches, powered by deck building, in which players assemble and equip a team of specialists in order to be the first to reach the lost city of gold. I've had this game on my wish list since 2018, but every time I went to look for it, it was already out of stock or only available in a language that I do not understand. And I can barely speak English as it is. While I was recently researching a new edition of this game, featuring artwork by Vincent Dutre, I discovered several copies of the base game and its two expansions back in stock. It was a really pleasant surprise that led to this game finally making its way to my game shelf. And another pleasant surprise was something that arrived in the mail this month.
Last episode, I mentioned a new G.I. Joe role-playing game that was on my wish list, and its publisher, Renegade Game Studios, saw that segment and then graciously surprised me with a copy of it in the mail. And after seeing this thing in person, I, I wanted to take a moment in this episode to do a, a quick little follow-up on it, because this is nothing like what I envisioned. When I first learned about the G.I. Joe RPG, I imagined a quaint little 50-page black and white rulebook with some nostalgic elements sprinkled in here or there, but what we got instead is this, which is nearly 350 pages of a system built on a comprehensive RPG game engine. In fact, I believe the foundation that its rules are built on are also adapted for the Power Rangers and Transformers RPGs. So kudos for bringing a lot more to the table than I initially expected. And if these videos help you find more games than you'd expect, then sharing it with someone who also enjoys discovering new games would be a pleasant surprise as well. But now, let's continue on to our next segment, right around the corner, where we'll find a few more games that are also right around the corner. When selecting which games to feature in the buyer's guide, I focus on games that are available right now, as opposed to Kickstarter campaigns that won't ship until months or even years from now. But some games have release dates that just refuse to adhere to my video production schedule, and while these releases or restocks haven't actually reached retail racks yet, they are coming so soon that waiting until next episode to cover them may be too late. So. Here's a heads up on several games that are peeking out from around the corner and just about ready to hit store shelves. For example, the anticipated unfinished business expansion for Star Wars Outer Rim is currently scheduled to land on this planet on June 10th. This expansion provides what many players of Outer Rim, which, which is right here, hello, what many players of this game have been hoping for since it was initially released, more characters, more ships, gears, bounties, jobs, encounters, and dice. Additionally, two new tiles and systems for favors and ambitions are also introduced, making that galaxy far, far away seem a little bit bigger. But possibly not as big as the next game, oh mother, with an imminent arrival, Burn Cycle from Chip Theory Games, in which one to four resilient robots, yeah, it's an empty box. In Burn Cycle, one to four resilient robots collaborate to infiltrate corrupt corporations, completing missions by sneaking inside, shutting down the company's physical operations and digital networks, while facing aggressive guards, fatal viruses, and threats from the architecture itself. As with most Chip Theory games, Burn Cycle's big box is brimming with custom dice, neoprene mats, and sturdy plastic chips, which, when coupled with the game's rule set, make this a game that's physically and mechanically a little on the heavier side. Yeah, there is a lot in this box to master, but if its colossal cache of content doesn't intimidate you, then Burn Cycle may be worth firing up at your next game night once it reaches markets in early June. Now, on the complete opposite end of the component spectrum, we have the next game that I want to give a heads up for. Tar! Part of a series of, this was a great idea. It's part of a series of abstract games that can be as challenging to find as they can be to pronounce or catch. This is a game about balance, in more ways than one, in which each player starts with 30 pieces, which they will move around the board and build into increasingly powerful stacks, with the objective of preventing their opponent from being able to do the same. Every single move that a player makes has to consider, is this worth making both me and my opponent's position stronger, or both weaker? I first played Czar in 2014, and it remains my favorite in the Gift series to this day. However, similar to the quest for El Dorado that was mentioned earlier in this episode, this game has also been chronically difficult to find in stock. So when I saw copies of it become available this month, I wanted to be sure to give a heads up about it to anyone who may also enjoy this tense, abstract game of balance and control before it <laughs> disappears again. Oh, side note. If you enjoy Tsar, then may I be so bold as to also recommend this other game right here, uh, Echo, which to me is a lot like Tsar. Uh, it's like Tsar version 2.0. 
takes the concepts introduced in Zar and expands on it, adding additional pieces, units, abilities, and heroic emperors. And another tricky to find game that's full of heroes is Rescuing Robin Hood, a collaborative deck building game for one to five players, which fortunately I do not have available to have thrown at my face, in which the respected rogue Robin Hood has been captured. And now his merry band of friends and followers have only five days to save him using all the wit, brawn, and stealth that they can muster. Select your dream team, storm the castle, and make one final attempt to rescue Robin Hood. Do it. I dare you. Now I'm including this game in our Heads Up segment because even though it arrived at several prominent retailers earlier this month, it's already sold out nearly every single place that I have checked. In fact, as of the time of this recording, the only location that I was able to find copies of it in stock was directly from the publisher's website, Castile Games. Link in the description below. Which brings us to the game that I have quite possibly been looking forward to the most in this month's list, Sniper Elite, a one against many game of hidden movement based on the video game series of the same name. In this game of stealthy World War II missions, one player takes on the role of the sniper, who must complete their top secret mission without triggering the attention of the German guards, who are controlled by up to three other players. And those guards must strike a balance between defending their posts and hunting the sniper, while the sniper must continually choose between completing their objectives through either subterfuge or direct conflict. Hidden movement games have always been a bit of a mixed bag for me in my game group. Uh, while Spectre Ops, which, oh, here you go, this guy, Spectre Ops, while Spectre Ops remains one of my favorite hidden movement games to this day, other games in the genre have fizzled out pretty bad after hitting the table with me and my friends. So when I demoed a prototype of Sniper Elite at PAX Unplugged back in 2019, I went into this game with a little bit of a critical eye, but I came out of that game eagerly looking forward to its retail release, which now, <laughs> nearly two and a half years later, is finally here, with the game available right now in the UK since the end of May, and estimated to arrive in North American locations in mid-June. So if you enjoy games like Spectre Ops, Fury of Dracula, Mind Management, or Narcos, then Sniper Elite, the board game, may be worth marking your calendars for, too. But let's not spend too much time dwelling on the future. Let's, let's focus on the present with our five best bets of the month, which are coming up right after a quick word from the other sponsor that helped make this episode possible, my first Castle Panic from Fireside Games. Based on the best-selling cooperative hit Castle Panic, my first Castle Panic now brings the same exciting edge-of-your-seat team-based experience to younger players. In the game, a group of monsters is racing out of the woods and coming right at your castle to smash it flat. And so, players will need to send out their brave defenders to catch all these monsters before they reduce the castle to rubble. Match the color and shape of a monster's space to catch it, but watch out, because the monsters move closer to the castle every single turn, and more monsters keep coming. My first castle panic requires no reading, emphasizes matching, strategic thinking, and taking turns, and has accessible rules that preschoolers can play independently. Plus, cooperative gameplay means no sore losers. Follow the link in this video's description to pick up my first castle panic for the little monster catcher in your life. And now, this month's best bets. Retail releases with either a proven track record, rave reviews, or both. If you're looking for a new hobby board game, well then, in my opinion, any one of the following is worth looking into. Oh, and hey, before we get started with this segment, I wanted to first, real quick, give a shout out to Innocent Traveler Games, who saw their title over here, The Ghosts Betwixt, featured as one of last month's best bets, and sent over this copy here for us to enjoy. You didn't have to do that, but I wanted to let you know that we do appreciate it very much. This is a good little dungeon crawler, so be sure to check it out, along with our first best bet this month, Ten Penny Parks, in which theme park enthusiasts plan and produce parks to attract patrons and inspire thrills, chills, and excitement. Each round, players take turns clearing space, building concessions and attractions, and buying more property in order to make their growing theme parks as attractive to visitors as possible. The player with the best theme park wins, with victory points gained by having attractions that best elicit certain emotions, perhaps in the same way that they may react to the fact that there has been a murder. 
At least, that's the case in Suspects, a series of murder mysteries inspired by Agatha Christie, designed for one to six sleuths with streamlined rules and plots spanning the globe from grand manor houses to shady theaters from Scotland to Egypt, and presented in three cooperative mystery stories that will require deliberation and deduction. And in what I believe is this episode's greatest segue, while Suspects requires players to pay attention to what they see, the next game requires players to pay attention to the sea, because it is Libertalia, Winds of Galecrest, an updated and revised new version of Libertalia, the pirate plundering pastime from 2012, which is right here. Libertalia, Winds of Galecrest, which this is not, this is the original version, that one, the new one, builds on this one, its predecessor's gameplay, of selecting and playing a specific pirate character from each player's hand to determine who gets to sail away with the treasures that are up for grabs. Additionally, the new version here introduces all new art, 40 character cards, up from 30 in the previous version, a reputation system to resolve tiebreakers, deluxe loot tokens, solo mode, and other things I forgot to right down. Oh, it also allows for single player games, which is what the, the solo mode does, which I did say, I did remember to write it down, the solo mode. As is the case with Chronicles of Avil, a cooperative board game designed to be accessible to children and adults alike, in which brave explorers protect the world of Avil, moving on a board of hex tiles that are arranged differently every game. Their journey will encounter dangerous monsters to fight by rolling dice to determine successes. Each achievement leads to a reward, which makes heroes more and more powerful, but power alone will not mean victory, as triumph also requires cooperation. So defend the castle and defeat the villain that threatens the land along with his magical menagerie. Now, if you capture all those bizarre beasts, well, maybe you could start a zoo to rehabilitate them. Because that is the only way that I can think to make a transition over to this month's biggest bet, the game of managing a modern non-magical zoo, Ark Nova. Smooth. In Ark Nova, ambitious animal lovers plan and design a modern, scientifically managed zoo. With the ultimate goal of owning the most successful zoological establishment, players build enclosures, accommodate animals, and support conservation projects all over the world, even in Somerset, Utah, where dogs are trained to drive buses. Each player has a set of five action cards to manage their gameplay, which, when combined with specialists and unique buildings, will pave the way for them to achieve their commendable course of creature conservation. And there are the games that make up this month's Board Game Buyer's Guide. But for even more of this month's hottest board, card, and tabletop games, continue on to Momenten, where we're counting them down. Or go ahead and check out any of the other informative and instructional videos on the channel. Whatever you do, wherever you go, we'll see you there. As long as it's in another video and you understand that by C, I mean that metaphorically.